Hey yo, how are you all doing? Welcome back to another video and welcome back to this tutorial because as I promised, I'm going to show you how to create something very fancy but very simple for your personal portfolio websites or just any other websites that you might be designing that's actually very simple to implement but looks quite professional and fancy. So that's what we're going to learn today. And that thing is called CSS snap to scroll, meaning that when you scroll the page, the page will align and snap into place at specific points that you specify. Uh, so in this case, we're going to do a whole page uh, vertically, horizontally, and then I'll show you that you can actually do it both ways and make your page do something cool. But before we get into this tutorial, if you do enjoy my tutorials and if you do like my channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button to stay in tune with all the content that I release. And as always, without any further ado, uh, let's jump into this tutorial and I'll show you exactly what I have. Okay, so not to waste time, I've created a main.html file and I created a main.css file. Now, in this case, we're going to be using SCSS or SAS uh, just to follow the structure of our HTML uh, to make it simpler to read. So first of all, we're going to create a basic HTML boilerplate. Now, I've got a plugin uh, installed where I can just uh, use the exclamation mark and hit tab, and that's going to import everything for me. Now, we need to link our SCSS file with, um, with our HTML. So then you'll just provide a link tag with a rel called stylesheet, your reference of CSS folder main.css. Now we're saying main.css because actually uh, the SCSS has to be uh, compiled into CSS for uh, our web browser to understand. So uh, this is something that is already done in the background. And then what we can just do is just give it a title called snap to scroll. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, okay, so now let's jump into the body tag and actually create our structure of the web page. So currently we have nothing. Uh, so the first thing that I want to discuss is with this snap to scroll, there is certain limitations with browser compatibility, meaning that when we say and refer to the body as our main parent, uh, it will work in Safari, but it won't work in Chrome. In other words, to turn this around, we would have to specify to the HTML element for it to work in Chrome, but not work in Safari. So our way to combat that and to actually make it work in both is to create a div, and we're going to give it a class of container. And basically this div is going to span the whole width and height of our body, and that's going to be our main wrapper for all the content in our whole web page. And this actually at this point avoids the whole problem of browser compatibility when it comes to CSS snap to scroll. Uh, now let's create our sections. Let's create our sections within a container, meaning each section is going to be a whole page width and a whole page height that we're going to scroll through. So we can just create a section here. And inside each section, I'm just going to give it a title tag to make sure that we can reference the web page and know which one we're on. So we're just going to give it a H1 and say page one. Now I'm just going to copy this and paste it in another two times call this page two and call this page three. And that's everything for our HTML. It doesn't get more complicated than this. It's where the CSS comes in, where the magic starts to happen. Uh, so we're just going to dive into that and see how cool this is. Now, a few years ago, uh, doing CSS snap to scroll or making the website scroll and snap into place was actually much more complicated because it involved a lot of JavaScript. But in this case, it's actually going to be quite simple uh, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. First of all, we can specify our body and we can say that inside this body, we want, to, we want it to span the whole width, the whole height. So we can say width, we want it to be uh, 100 uh, viewport width and we want the height to be a hundred viewport height. Now um, body HTML has a margin, a default margin that gets applied to any web page. So we just want to eliminate that, eliminate any margins. Um, and there we go. Now I'm just going to give this a background color so you can actually see uh, that things have changed. And then we go onto the web browser and just refresh. There you go. So we have our whole uh, body that we span the whole width and height. And then we have a page one, page two, and page three. 
which are a section tanks that we will have to kind of apply styling to to make them look a little bit better. So uh, let's jump in and work on the main container. So we can refer to the class container and inside this class, we want the class to span the whole width and height of body. So we'll just say width is 100% and height is 100%. Now, what else do we want to do? Well, I want everything inside my container uh, to be the main parent. So uh, I want everything to match whatever body is having. So in this case, I'm going to give it a background color of green and we're just going to see everything being overrided by the green color. Now we can see this red section here and that's because every single uh, heading tag has a default margin. So what we'll do is in just a second, I'm just going to take each uh, page uh, heading and we're just going to position everything right in the center. So uh, this kind of annoying margin will go away. Now that everything is kind of overrided by green, uh, what we can do is we can work on our sections. And this is where kind of the fun will start to happen. Now I wanna position everything in the center. And uh, for all of you that always want to know how to position things in the center, the best way to do it is just to use flex and make sure that the parent that is going to have our headings, which is the section, will have a display of flex. And we're going to say that this container will justify all the content in the center, which is vertical, I never can remember if it's vertical or horizontal alignment, but align items, center, and basically that, that takes care of horizontal and vertical. So now if I refresh the page and we go back, everything is aligned. But why is it at the top? Well, it's because we haven't given uh, each one of our sections uh, a width and a height of 100% to match each page. Uh, so each section will have a width of 100 viewport, uh, viewport width and a height of 100 viewport height. Here we go. So now when we look at it, everything is positioned in the center. So when I scroll like so, everything is in the center. Now we wanna differentiate each one of these pages by giving them a little bit of color and maybe make the text a little bit fancier. So we're going to do that now before we actually get into all the fun styling. So uh, what we can say is that inside each section, uh, I want the colors to be different. So what we can do is we can specify with an and, and we can refer to the nth, nth uh, of type. And I'll say the first child, which is going to be the first section. I wanna give it a, a background color of, um, let's say RGB something dark, 28, 28, 28. And then I'm going to give it a color of, let's say, uh, something nice. Well, let's just go with green. Let's just keep it simple. Now I'm going to copy this over another two times. Now we'll go, have to change the nth type to the second child and to the third child. We'll change the color to 38 and the color here to blue, and then the background color in our fairy child to 48, 48, and the color here to yellow. So now what we will see is the colors have changed and we can differentiate between the different sections. Uh, those colors are really bright and I don't like that. Now we can get rid of the uh, default red and green borders because we don't need them anymore for our reference. And now uh, what we can go ahead and do, if I'll just make that bigger, is uh, we can work on specifying the H attribute, so the H1 tag. Now I want to give this a font family of, uh, I don't know, Arial, might be nice. And then I want to give it a font size of like 15, EM. And here we go, we've got page one, page two, and page three. So how do we differentiate and how do we snap to scroll? Now this is where all of the magic comes in. We have a parent container that we reference all our sections to, and then we have all our sections. So we wanna mention that in the parent container, uh, we have a scroll snap type. Now, first of all, we can uh, specify the direction. So I want everything to scroll and snap in the Y direction, so vertical. And I wanna say that it's mandatory. And I'm going to talk about the different differences in a little bit. 
Now we also want to say that the uh, overflow uh, in the direction of y is set to scroll. Now what will happen here? Well, nothing will happen just yet because what we need to specify is from the parent in the child section, so each in each page, we want to say that the scroll snap align attribute is set to start, meaning that it's going to snap to the very start of each page. So now when I scroll, there you go. And that's where the magic happens. Three simple lines of CSS with a lot of styling to just, you know, differentiate between the pages and it snaps nicely into place. Now, let me talk about some uh, differences and some more kind of, uh, you know, uh, different variations of this. Now, instead of mandatory, we have something called proximity, meaning that rather than snapping the whole page, if I keep on scrolling, either it's going to return or it's going to find that proximity point where it will just catch on and then snap into place, like so. So if you have a bigger page and you don't want it to always snap to the center, so you can continue scrolling and then at one point it's going to find that proximity and snap nicely into place. So that is the difference between proximity and mandatory. Now, what will happen if we want to scroll through our pages horizontally? And that's where the fun comes in. So here we just need to change the orientation to X. Here we need to change the orientation of overflow to X. And now what will happen? Let's have a look. So nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, the reason nothing happens is because in section, we want the sections to be aligned horizontally with each other. And a simple way to do that is to say that the parent container, which contains all the sections, we want to give that a display of flex. Now, display of flex by default is align all the items horizontally. So now everything will appear next to each other. But now we don't want the flex property to tell us that, hey, every single page on here should fit into one viewport width and one viewport height. So actually what we want to do is for a section here, we want to give section a flex of none. And I will say, hey, don't shrink the page to make it fit. Just leave it as it's specified here with the width 100 and height 100 of viewport height and width. And here, that's exactly what it does. So now we can scroll to the side and now we have a horizontally scrolling page. How cool is that? I mean, it's so simple to set up, but it's it's so nice and so kind of, uh, you know, easy to, to implement and make your websites, you know, have a really nice user experience because uh, you separate into sections and you can, you know, jump through those sections quite nicely. So now you guys might ask me a question, hey, Philip, what happens if I have a fixed navigation from the top or a fixed navigation from the left and I scroll and I want it to work? Well, there is a whole property for that in CSS. So when you refer to that section, which is our section that contains our content, we can say that we want to apply a scroll margin of, in this case, left. And let's say that our fixed navigation is 100 pixels. You can say 100 pixels margin. And what you'll see that does is it'll scroll and leave a little bit of space. So that's great. So that gives space for your margin. But now it kind of overflows here, but we want it to be a whole page again. So what we can do is we can ref reference to the width of the page and we can give it a little calculation saying, I want it to be 100 viewport width minus the size of my navigation, uh, which is 100 pixels. So now when you scroll, you'll see your navigation and then obviously it'll leave that space right there, which is quite cool. And that's basically everything. Now, I'm not going to code this on the screen, but I'll show you. Uh, and basically what you can do is if you want uh, to create a very fancy page, and let's suppose you have many little boxes on the page, you can actually have a scroll snap type property of both, meaning you can scroll vertically and horizontally and make it snap. Now, obviously we have an overflow here of X. You would need to get rid of that just to say overflow of X and Y. Let me just get rid of this. Uh, this width, not to confuse you guys. This is snapping to the to the start. We can also make it snap to the center, or you can also make it snap to the end. So you can specify this as center, or you can specify this as end. Uh, now, of course, uh, 
please go ahead and play around with this. It's uh, super cool. And uh, that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you're a fan of my tutorials, uh, I'm happy to share my knowledge with you. So make sure you look out for the next one. But for now, guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you.